There are not many things more dangerous than a person who is fueled by hurt and pain and has nothing to lose. Hello everyone, my name is Max Aaron James. This is a review of the movie Creed 3, directed by Michael B. Jordan. This is his directorial debut. The story is by Ryan Coogler and the screenplay is written by Keenan Coogler, his, Ryan Coogler's younger brother, and Zach Balin. The story is a continuation of the Creed Rocky franchise where Creed 3, or in this movie, Creed 3, Creed is pretty much done with boxing, has a beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful daughter, is has his own gym, you know, living his life, relaxing pretty much, and a childhood friend, or his past pretty much catches up to him. A ch as a childhood friend is released from prison and looking for an opportunity to box, who goes to him for this opportunity. As the two characters start butting heads, it ends up being a fight for more than just success. We are barely two months into 2023 and we already have two movies with Jonathan Majors. Three if you include Magazine Dreams, which is not a wide release, at least not yet. In two of the movies, Jonathan Majors plays the antagonist, the bad guy, to the protagonist. And in both cases, I would say he is the standout as far as acting goes. The difference between Creed 3 and Ant-Man Quantumania is that in Creed 3, Jonathan Majors is not the only good thing about the movie. With this being Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut and being the first film, sports film shot on IMAX, if that matters to you, this was very good. I think Michael B. Jordan did really good in executing this story in guiding the actors and there were maybe one or two stumbles in the director's chair with this movie but it was not something to really that really stood out or nothing major and i really appreciated it again there are things to note but be, this being his first time i was really happy and i would like to see him behind the camera again and i think where this movie falters most is the writing but i think i want to get to that I do want to get to that later on. The two leads, Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan, do tremendous, especially with face acting, right? You see the emotion through their eyes, which leads to a lot more impact, a lot more feelings, and a lot more connection to the characters. And Jonathan Majors, my goodness. Although he was already a star to many of us because of many previous projects, a lot of people did not discover Jonathan Majors or have not discovered Jonathan Majors yet. Not until Ant-Man... Quantumania, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, or this movie, which is a bit disappointing considering he's been in a lot of good projects previously and has demonstrated over and over again how well he is able to act, especially, again, showing the emotion in his eyes, in his face. Jonathan Majors not only played his role very well, but his character, Damian Anderson, was written very well with a good backstory, good connection to Adonis Creed, and you felt his pain and you understood his hurt and his backstory and what he, he's been through being in jail, incarcerated for 18 years, 18 plus years. And it got to a point where I was not rooting for anyone in particular. Although I was not hoping that Adonis Creed would lose, I was not sure who to root for, who should be winning. No one was in the wrong for what they were doing and why they were doing it. Tessa Thompson plays Bianca in this movie, Adonis Creed's wife, and she did not get as much screen time as previous films, However, she did good with what was given to her. I think she's a tremendous actress. And there was one scene where she had to present some anger and she did well. I think she did better than the others who were involved in that scene. And I think when it, expressing emotion, she does very good with that. There were some choices made in this movie as far as filming or shooting that did feel a bit off, but it, those moments were short-lived and were not enough to really pull me away from the movie or take away from the story. And so those, again, were not a big issue. Now, where I was disappointed is the writing. I feel that choices were made that felt like cheating. And I will say cheating more than just lazy writing because it took away from the impact. And it felt as if it felt from my perspective that the writers believe they needed this to make a point of something that I do not really want to get into, at least not in this non-spoiler section. 
Overall, it was a good movie. It was fun. A good closing to the trilogy, or a decent closing to the trilogy, I will say. Something worth watching in theaters, especially in IMAX. Watching it in IMAX, I felt it, and I understood why it was shot in IMAX. And I think a lot of sports movies, especially ones like this, where you're in the ring with the characters, with the fighters, with the athletes, shoot it in IMAX. With all of that said, let us get to spoilers. That is a warning to you that we are going into spoilers. So if you have not seen the movie or you do not want to get spoiled, go watch the movie, come back when you're ready, right? Because we're about to get into it. All right, Felicia Rashad's character dies. I told you we're getting into spoilers. Her dying, I am sure, added to the emotional mix-up or the mix of emotions that were going through Adonis Creed and maybe some people in the audience. And But I, I will note, although I'm not upset with that choice, I do not feel it added much weight or stakes to the story itself. It was more of something that just to let you know that the main character, Adonis Creed, is just going through a lot right now in this moment. Now, Damien Anderson, played by Jonathan Majors, Dame has been incarcerated for 18 years. He, when growing up with Adonis Creed, was seen as a boxing prodigy. It was really good. And I guess through, the, through these 18 years, he's been staying sharp, constantly practicing, keeping his weight up. And once released, is just wanting an opportunity, especially knowing that he is older, right? Just like Adonis Creed, they are past what people would consider the your prime, especially when it comes to sports, especially with boxing. But Damien has something to prove, and this is his lifetime goal. This is what he's always wanted and what he's been dreaming of, and he needs to take advantage of the opportunity now, especially because his time is passing. And Adonis Creed eventually gives him that opportunity. Adonis Creed does have a protege, right, a predecessor, uh, Felix, I do not know the rest of the, name, the character's name, who, good fighter, almost a pr I think he was like 15 and 1, 14 by knockout, 14 wins by knockout. A fight is set up to be between Felix and Damien, and Damien wins by cheating, to be honest. The backstory for Damien Anderson was very well thought out, like I said, and the chemistry between Damien or Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan, and even Tessa Thompson, when Jonathan Majors and Tessa shared a scene at a party. It was felt, it felt as if they were really having these conversations and that there was really history there behind all these characters, especially between Jordan's character and Majors' character. It, you, you felt it and you felt that there was some resentment between, uh, from Damien, Damien Anderson towards Adonis Creed. You felt the hurt, you felt the pain, especially through Jonathan Majors' face acting his eyes were always glazed, watery, and it, it, it hurt to see that, knowing that he just wants an opportunity, he just wants to get back what he believes he's earned or entitled to, and maybe what he deserves. When Creed and Anderson finally get in the ring, there was no particular person I was rooting for. I was just there to take in the emotions, take in the feelings, and see the dynamic that was going to happen between them as they're both fighting for different reasons and fueled by different things. And although Creed was the protagonist, and I did not want him to lose, but I did not feel Jonathan Major's character was wrong. And I like, there are not many movies that have a character that is in that gray area. Things are not black and white and there's so much to it. And this is where I have an issue with the writing because they cheated. From my perspective, it seemed that Keenan Coogler and Zach Balin had to remind you who the antagonist was and who not to be rooting for. They had to remind you this is named after Adonis Creed, not Damian Anderson. So do not be rooting for this person. So Felix, who is coming up under Adonis Creed, is not taller or bigger and does not seem stronger than Jonathan Majors' character, Damian Anderson. So at no point did I feel that this person has an opportunity. Now Felix might be faster, but with the hunger and pain and anger in Damian Anderson, I felt that this guy's just gonna take some punches and then knock this guy out. 
but they made them cheat. And at that moment, I it wasn't too big of an issue. I was like, sure, he kind of cheated, you know, or he, not kind of, he did cheat, but we're gonna give him that. After he wins, he starts running his mouth saying Creed is not really a good fighter and not worth it. And a, this is the resentment because Adonis Creed, after his friend was incarcerated, never wrote, never visited, never called. And his mom, even played by Felicia Rashad, even hid the letters from him because she feared that he would go back to that life. And Mamie would have never had what he got. When they get to the final fight between Anderson and Creed, this again, Damien starts cheating again. And it felt like a cheat. It felt like a way out to remind you that Dame is the antagonist and he is the bad guy. Again, his motives for getting to this point and doing what he is doing did not feel wrong. And I understood it and I felt that pain. Maybe Keenan Kugler and Zach Balin felt that this was wrong, which it was not. I think having a character like this where you do not know who to root for makes for better storytelling. But when you add a cheat like showing someone that's cheating in the sport, then you immediately do not want to root for this person. And again, I had a big issue with that. Halfway through the fight, I immediately thought this is not going to end the way I think it should because they are building up Adonis' Creed's emotion and motivation too much. The music is hyping up. And they were getting the audience to even cheer for him as he was getting up after being knocked down. And I knew this was not going to end the way I believe it should have to allow that emotional impact. Creed wins by knockout. The audience I watched it with erupted. I did not. With everything that this story had built up to, I believe the best way to have done it was to allow them both to go through every round without being knocked down or at least getting back up if they do get knocked down. They are both hungry, both fighting for different reasons. Jonathan Major's character has the weight, the height, the hunger that Michael B. Jordan's character does not have. Anderson is fueled with pain, hurt, nothing to lose, is stronger, bigger, and has his eye on the target and is ready to potentially die in the ring for what he wants. He's wanted for most of his life. And Adonis Creed is just trying to make sure that this person doesn't harm anyone to prove that he is a fighter and he's experienced in the ring in a professional level. So he has that one up of being faster, analyzing, know how to study people. And that's where they could be tied, right? They could be balanced out because of that. And I felt that maybe allow Adonis Creed to win, but by points, right? They both made it to the end. But no, we have a knockout, which took away from the emotional impact. To have them both make it to the end would have been more powerful. And maybe allowing Major's uh, character, I keep forgetting the character's name, to allow Damian Anderson to win maybe would have added, but I can see there being an issue considering this person is very egotistical and has a lot of pride. They may have continued running their mouth. So maybe it was good to allow Adonis Creed to win, but allow it in a different way. It would have still been sad to see Damien's character lose through points instead of allowing him to be knocked out. Here you gave Adonis Creed glory that he already had. We already seen him win in previous movies in some way or another. He maybe did not win in the first movie, but he he gained that respect and he came from nothing. So then when you go into the second movie, he wins. He's the champion. You even see that in the beginning of this movie. He is the winner. Adonis Creed is already champion. He already has all the money he, in the world, has a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter, has the family he wants, is living where he wants, living how he wants, has a gym, he's coaching, he's has all these people he's, that look up to him. He's a role model. He has a wife who's making a, also making a lot of money. This guy's good, but if it was almost as if they were trying to convince you that he still has more to gain, it, it, more to gain in the ring, which he definitely does not. His win did not hit to me the way maybe they intended it to, but I am not the general audience because again, most of the people in the auditorium that I was watching the movie in, they clapped, they cheered, they were very happy. Another thing was, I was as I was leaving the theater and heading home, what is Damian Anderson left with, right? Is 
he he maybe left the halfway house because technically he has a job now. He's a ch- he's a world champion. I was wondering, does he have sponsorships? But I would assume so, considering he is a world champion, even if that was short lived. He had to have signed contracts, been received some money, hopefully using that well. But now, what other resources are provided to him? His family, his friends are all gone. They have either moved on with their lives, no longer associated with him, or dead, or even incarcerated just like he was. He does not have people to go back to. He has no support group aside of the very weak resources provided to p- to people who were once incarcerated. Adonis Creed has these resources that could help with his well-being and mental health and even provide opportunities to still be involved in boxing or something that he wants to be involved with in some way, but in no, nothing felt like they will continue associating with one another. The final conversation between Anderson and Creed felt very much like closure, as if we will no longer associate with one another, you go on your way, I'm gonna continue living my life as Adonis Creed with all this money, all these opportunities, all these resources, all these people that look up to me, you continue living alone and feeling alone even when a crowd, within a crowd of people because no one connects to you, you do not know anyone, no one knows you, and a lot of people are only around you probably because you are now, well, once were world champion. Sorry, that's my phone. It was pretty depressing the way they ended it with for Damian Anderson. I felt that he had nothing, even with the money he may have. Again, who's there with him? Who really cares? And will he take the time to get the needs for his mental health, to put him on the right track for success? 18 years in jail, incarcerated, especially going in at a young age, that is a comfort for him. The mindset that has been established could lead him back there, which often happens. And the system has been established knowing that people like this are left feeling alone and comfortable being incarcerated. And I believe they take advantage of that. At no point did it feel like this person was going to be well off or better off, even with this closure with Adonis Creed. It felt like this conversation was just to let leave Adonis Creed to get Adonis Creed off the hook. Although he does not owe Anderson anything, it just felt like here. this is to make you feel better. Now let me go on struggling in this life, at least with my mental well-being. Again, he may have sponsorships because he was world champion. He has money from the fights. And so he's doing not horrible. He's doing much better than a lot of majority of people in general, let alone incarcerated people. It just took away so much and it left me empty, feeling empty, not in a good way. It... I, I do not know if that was the intention. I I could not cheer for Adonis Creed after w- the way it ended. Anyway, although I was bothered with the outcome, I was very happy with the directing. Michael B. Jordan did really good. I, th- I think the shots and the ring were felt. I felt those punches. I still think Ryan Coogler did best with the boxing matches, with the first Creed, especially that final fight scene, the way it was following them. Really good. I did like when the audience disappeared and it was just Creed versus Anderson in the ring and it was just silent for a moment and you could feel the punches and it just, hey, I'm focused on you. Music started coming and swelling up and I felt that, I felt that was not needed, but from the moment that was silent and you just felt those punches and the, and the fighters breathing, I did like that. I would rank this movie at the bottom of the Creed movies with Creed 2 being at the top because I feel that that actually elevated the stakes. We're here, stakes were presented, and then an emotional, like, just there was much more emotions in this movie, but that was immediately stripped away. You know when you go to the movies, it is important to have a very impactful ending, or to consider the emotional impact or the impression you will leave on audiences based off the ending, because that is what the audience leaves with and to present me with something like this uh, but that is not Michael B. Jordan's fault that is on the writing side maybe Ryan Coogler should have written it but he, the story is by him so maybe he was fine with this as well that's all I got what did you think about the movie if you have seen it if not check it out and until next time take care of each other check up on one another check up on yourself and remember potential has no limit